Hello and welcome to Inside OUSD. I'm John Sasaki. Oftentimes, our clerical team members are the very first people that people see when they walk into our schools. That's who greets them, that's who welcomes them into the school, that's who helps them when they need uh, support. Uh, but have you ever wondered what exactly they do? Joining me now are Shulia White, who oversees our clerical team, and one of our longtime clerical team members, Oisa Garibaldi from Life Academy. Thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate you. Uh, and let's start off. Um, both of you are second generation staff members for OUSD. So tell me about yes. it because that's that's a long time. And both of you have been here a long time as well. Yes. Tell me about your history here, what your what your families did, what you do now, and, and what you did between, what schools you attended, et cetera. Sure. So my mom, uh, Dr. Ethel Spencer, she was a teacher in Oakland Unified School District for over 35 years. So was my father, Malachi Spencer. I was born and raised in Oakland. I still live in Oakland. I love the city of Oakland, and I love Oakland Unified School District. Um, I attended Prescott Elementary School, McChesney Junior High School, which is now Edna Brewer, and um, graduated from Oakland High School in 1982. Go Wildcats! <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I love being here in Oakland Unified. I supported um, Chabot Elementary School in my first role as an administrative assistant. That was in 2004. Then I became um, network operations coach for about three years, and now I am a coordinator, pre-K through 12 systems and operations, and I support all the schools in Oakland. Very good. And, and, now, and you say your mother worked in the district for a long time she as well? She did for th almost 30 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so, so that, and that kind of, you were raised in the school district, not just attending our <laughs> schools, but I mean, literally with your mom yes. there too. Yes. I remember my after school days was Second Avenue. She had a little desk for me. <laughs> I did, had to do my homework until she clocked out at five o'clock. Wow. And I also remember going to many board meetings and just, you know, seeing what it was all about, all sure. the happenings in central sure. office. And, and so you attended which of our schools? I attended uh, Centro Infantil, CDC, mm -hmm. and then La Escuelita, mm -hmm. and then I went to Claremont Middle, mm -hmm. and I graduated at Oakland Tech in 1992. Uh-oh, a little Ohio <laughs> Oakland Tech rivalry right here. Okay, <laughs> keep separate. And, and then, and you've been working here for a very long time as well. Yes, 31 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, and have you been at Life the whole time? I've been at Life for, I believe this is my 21st year now at okay. Life. Okay. And where else were you before that? I first started at Melrose, okay. the original Melrose. Okay. Um, then I went to uh, Madison, and then I went to E. Morris Cox, okay. which is now a charter mm -hmm. school. Right. And I took some time off when I had my kids. Very good. And then um, when I decided to come back, I was offered some positions at Central, and then um, they said, "There's a new school coming up, you know, branch from Fremont High, mm. called Life Academy mm -hmm. on 21st." and international, that was the original site. And so um, I interviewed at all three to see what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And um, I just really loved the principal. Uh, I loved the school site. I loved the fact that it was a small school. And so I said, maybe I'll stay at the school site. Very good. Mm -hmm. and, uh, just for my own edification here, was the principal at that time Preston Thomas? The principal at that time was Allison McDonald. Okay. Preston Thomas was the lead mm -hmm. oh, okay. in terms of the science department, oh, gotcha. which originated gotcha. and branched off from uh, Fremont to form the Health Academy. Gotcha. But I did gotcha. work with Preston for many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Our Chief Systems and exactly. Services Officer. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Who is now my supervisor. Now your supervisor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's all, it's all family family. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> all family thing. All right, so so um, clerical. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in OUSC, that means pretty much everything. I mean, yeah. honestly. And, and uh, I've gotten, my, my experiences have been, uh, you know, talking to our clerical at various schools and hearing their stories mm -hmm. and all that. And so what, what does clerical staff do in the schools? We can talk about the, the rest in other departments as well, but what, what other ones do here in our schools? So I like to say, um, first of all, our clerical team, they're like the heartbeat of the schools. We know that uh, there are other departments and other folks that are in the schools that are also the heartbeat. Mm -hmm. But our clerical, they play a very integral role in our schools. They're like an engine in the car. So if you don't have the engine, it won't work, the car won't work. Mm -hmm. um, our clerical, they do everything. They do um, from answering phones to um, ensuring that there are supplies to making sure that um, data confirmation registration is completed, students have immunizations and their input in the system to ensure safety in the schools. They ensure 
um, teachers are taking attendance every single day for all of our students. That supports our safety, um, making sure we're counting for our students that are in school and we can identify the students that are not in school. And so um, Alicia, who is still supporting a school site and one of our clerical mentors, can expand on that because I know there are so many other things that I'm missing. But if you can share some other. Well, uh, it's, yeah, what, it's, do you, what do you do? What's your average day like? I, I can say not one day is the same. Mm. Things, yes. so many different things happen on the daily. But it's really, you're kind of like making sure the daily operations of the school site is running smooth. Yeah. Because not only are you supporting your administrators, you're supporting your teachers, you're supporting the students. Um, you ha we have a team, like we have an administrative team in the office, but then you're also supporting custodial, mm -hmm. you're supporting mm -hmm. um, food service, mm -hmm. you're supporting um, um, when district people come on campus, for example, you know, from warehouse. And so mm -hmm. there's so many different um, people that you collaborate with on the daily, aside from people that come in from the community, you know. And so when people come in the office, they're the first, we we're the first persons that they Absolutely. see. When the phone rings, we're the first voice that they hear. You know, when people send us emails, you know, we, we, we respond because the administrators, a lot of times, they don't have that time. They're, mm -hmm. they're busy doing so many things. So mm -hmm. we're the point person that communicates with the community. Right. So um, there's always so many things that, that, that come through and you're, you're daily constantly, you know, um, helping students that come in the office for various things, parents that come in for various things. Um, so yeah, I, I can honestly say not one day is the same. There's always yeah. something, you know. I, you know, the, the, the frontline aspect of what you're, what you're talking about is really so important because we, we all know that there, there are issues here in the streets of Oakland, right? And sometimes right. those can spill into our schools mm -hmm. in one way or another. And so, you know, if there is an emergency in the area, you're the ones calling the police. That's right. You're the right. ones, you know, making sure that the, the school is secure. Mm -hmm. Um, it, you are protecting, you're the exactly. first line of people that's protecting first. our kids. That's, yes. that's exactly right. We, mm -hmm. I always tell the parents and I tell the students, because um, we're middle and high school and sometimes kids think it's easy just to, oh, I'm going to go over here off campus when they're not supposed to. But I always tell them, you know, we have control over what happens inside campus. We have no control what happens outside on the street. Mm -hmm. You're safe here. Your parent thinks and knows that you're supposed to be in school. And we know that you're supposed to be in school. So when you're here with us, we can, we are here to safeguard and protect you. Mm -hmm. And if you're out where you're not supposed to be, it's difficult. Yeah. So a lot mm -hmm. of times when things happen, then students reflect. They know they made a poor decision. And mm -hmm. so they should be at school because we as the adults and the caregivers during the day um, are there to support them and to guide them. And, and you know, we, we say that everybody works in our schools is an educator because you have yes. you interact so much with That's our kids right. That's true. and help mm -hmm. teach them the difference mm -hmm. between That's right and wrong. You may not be teaching them math per, per mm -hmm. se or history right. or whatever. You may sit, you know, work with them a little bit on the homework or whatever, mm -hmm. but but it really is just more about that practical knowledge, Very the common sense so. decisions, the things mm -hmm. that, you know, the, the SEL that we talk about, the social emotional right. learning. Mm -hmm. I mean, so much right. of that is because, you, uh, you know, I would think in, in some cases, uh, you know, you work with some kids who may not have a, a ton of support at home, That's and, right. and they turn to our staff, whether it's teacher, whether it's someone mm -hmm. in the office, whether mm -hmm. it's counselor, as as kind of an uncle or an aunt, uh, mm -hmm. you know, someone who yeah. they can turn to when they've got problems. How much of your job is, is that sort of thing? Wow, that's th you hit it on the nail because mm -hmm. I reflect every school year as it ends, as we're doing now, I reflect on everything that I did during the school year, and another year that I've been working with students and supporting students in Oakland. So to me, there's always a connection and it's bittersweet because, wow, another graduating class and then we're welcoming new students coming in. So um, I can say that one of the best things of my job is the fact that I get to connect with students in a way that is different from being in the classroom. And I mm -hmm. also get to connect with their parents because as I get to know them, and at life they're with us for seven years if they decide to stay from middle school through high school. So I get to connect with them in a way that I learn about them and their situation and their needs. And so a lot of times they come in, Miss Alicia, can I just take a break? Can I just, I need a moment? You know, because we give uh, students opportunity to come out of the classroom if they need uh, a space. And they know where their safe spaces are. 
and a lot of times they come and they look for those adults they can make connections with. And, and, and can, can you speak kind of broadly knowing, I mean, having done the job yourself, but also yes. overseeing all this, what kinds of, of things do our kids have that cause them to need a break, need to get away? Mm -hmm. what, what are they doing? Oh, with? yeah, there could be anxieties. There could be um, some students may have not had a meal at home the night before. That's true. They might have um, kind of feel a trust with a front office person that encourages them with a kind word mm -hmm. or um, li like Alicia is saying, they feel really safe. Mm -hmm. They feel that there's a bond and they know they can turn to that person in the front office and um, share with them or not share anything, just be there. Mm -hmm. Just get that encouraging word or that support so that they can kind of clear their head and then go back into the classroom so they can learn and then um, be ready for that lesson that's being taught in class. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I go into our schools a lot, and, and um, I, especially the elementary level, I, I get kids like who want to hug on a pretty Absolutely. regular basis, right? I mean, and, and that's that's yeah. it, it, it's it's so it seems so simple and so kind of like basic, mm -hmm. but for so many of our kids, that can mean yeah. a huge thing to them that day and yes. and moving forward, can't mm -hmm. it? I remember being on campus at Claremont. Um, one year and the principals they would tell there were co-principals they would tell the students that they loved them every day before school mm -hmm. ended every single day and I think things like that make a difference uh, meeting children where they are some kids may not ever hear I love you from an adult in their home in their household maybe they do maybe some don't um, and so just those small things might make a difference for our kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, I would imagine that there may, may even be uh, some aspect of coaching parents or, or families. Right. And hey, yeah, yes. tell your kids you love them. That's Give them right. a hug. Yeah. You know, That's I mean, exactly right. Yeah. I, yes. I, I mean, Modeling for our, yeah. our parents. Yeah. It's, it's, it, this, it's such a huge job that you all do. I mean, it's because it, it's not just taking attendance. Right. It's not just answering the phone. It's not just, you That's know. That's right. It's, you, we are the the, the first mm -hmm. the first line of defense for our kids, right. and, and that includes giving them love, giving them support, giving yes. them things that they may not get elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and I love that um, even parents feel so connected to some of our clerical team members. Um, they're able to share certain things that are happening in the household, so that our our schools can know how to better support That's those right. particular families mm -hmm. and get them extra support services if mm -hmm. they need them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, one of one of your colleagues uh, explained one of the things that they do as they, they quantified it as they're part of the boob the boo boo band aid brigade. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, you're giving out ice packs, exactly. you're giving out band aids. Yes. Yes. Oh, like, that happens Everything. all the time. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah. it's true. Giving out sometimes a banana, mm. an orange, an right. apple, something exactly. to drink, some yeah, crackers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean. Right. A lot of times students, you know, they just need that space, but then sometimes yeah. they come in and they're hungry yeah. and mm -hmm. they need something. Yeah. So sometimes I'll call the cafeteria manager or, you know, whatever there's extra or, you know, as a staff, we always have a box full of snacks mm -hmm. yeah. because sometimes they just need that. Yeah. And, and, and I think that people don't, like a lot of people in our world, maybe even some people here in Oakland, just don't really get that. That's that, true. Yeah. That, you know, we do breakfast, lunch, and supper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And in some cases, those are the only meals our kids That's are getting. That's very right. true. And, That's right. And, and it's, mm -hmm. you know, for whatever reason, there, you know, maybe maybe there isn't a lot of support at home. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people there. They don't have a lot of resources, things yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And so it, it is incumbent upon us to make sure that they have those things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why is that? Why oh, is it so we're important? In, we're in service of our students mm -hmm. yeah. and families for sure. Mm -hmm. And and yes. and they they literally it, it's impossible to learn effectively if you're on an empty. That's screen. exactly that's right. Very, very right. true. That's right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's even true. me, if I'm working, <coughs> you I need to, yeah, I, I need to stop and yeah. sure. and replenish myself. Sure. Um, so that I can focus on the t task mm -hmm. at hand for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and and I would think that that a lot of like you you mentioned that you know you do occasionally okay, will give give. Uh, students food or whatever, mm -hmm. but but you see how emotional they can get when mm -hmm. they don't have food. That's right. very true. Mm -hmm. Right, and so it, it th this is a huge job. Mm -hmm. It is. I mean, it's, a, it's an enormous job. Yes. But no matter where you are, and, and by the way, before we go on, let me just ask you real quick, and we're kind of wrapping up here. But what what uh, do do the clerical team members? Uh, that exist across the district within the central office and other mm -hmm. uh, various departments. Do they do similar things or is it a, a kind of a different sort of job for them? Yeah, central office, um, they have different type deliverables. They service all the schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
all the schools. And so each school site, they kind of handle the things at their site, mm -hmm. like right. their budget and specific things to their school site. Gotcha. But the central office team, like I'm on, I'm central office, we support all That's of right. our schools in right. mm -hmm. the entire district. And you're not really interfacing with kids all that much either. No, right. no. Okay. When I visit schools, I do yeah. um, from time to time, but my main role is supporting our wonderful clerical team members, clerical mentors, mm -hmm. and then um, my job also, I'm sort of in the middle between school sites and central, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I make sure that the deliverables, the timelines, the deadlines are being met by the schools and then reporting that data up to central mm -hmm. office. You right. connect so, us. Yes, I'm you the connect connector. Us. Mm -hmm. Let me just ask you from a school perspective, because you do so many different mm -hmm. things, is that ever overwhelming to you? Like, do you, how do you handle all that? It, uh, it is. I, I can't lie. Um, I remember one summer many years ago, finished off the school year, I got in my car, and I was as I was driving home, I felt like, I don't think I want to come back. Mm -hmm. I was just so exhausted, like mm -hmm. mentally exhausted. And I remember I wrote an email, and... Um, I let the administrator know how I felt. The administrator was across the, uh, the country. No, he's actually out of the country. <laughs> and mm -hmm. he called me and he said, we need to talk. Mm -hmm. So when he came back, we had a really good conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, that was the first time that I felt that I was able to express how I felt and how hard the work was getting because at that moment, at that time we were um, expanding and we were very mm -hmm. short on mm -hmm. staff and right. so I was feeling really overwhelmed sure. and I was like, there's no way I can continue to physically do this if I didn't get the support. Right. And that was the first time that I felt that support and I felt heard mm -hmm. and then moving forward it's just grown to what we have now and so it is very important for administrators to give the space and time to check in with their support team because if we're not well, we are, uh, we are not good to anybody to serve. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we do have to kind of step back and reflect and take care of ourselves so we can take care of others. So, so you're like the kids. Sometimes you need a little break uh, too. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for being here. We r really appreciate this discussion. Thank you for and us. thank you for all that you do for our schools and our kids thank and, you. and all the entire district. We really appreciate it. Thank you, John. Thank you. And that does it for this episode. Uh, I'm John Sasaki. We will see you again next time for another episode of Inside OUSD. Mm -hmm.